everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back from the brand. New video. Today's a video we stand here today off sit here. The actual day to break down and preview the last Europa League group match of the season. That's scary to say, but it's been an exciting journey so far in the Europa League. But we've got one game left with an opportunity to top the group, which drastically changes who our next opponent could be. But hey, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves just yet and start dreaming about the knockouts because standing in our way trying to stop us from topping the group is another pretty damn good football team by the name of Lech Poznan. So let's get on with the video and dive right into the oppositional preview and get an update on how they've been getting on. And you know what's really interesting about doing the second preview for Lech Poznan compared to when we actually done the first one? If you can cast your minds back all the way back to the first group game of this Europa League. We sat here on this channel, discussed it, me and me, saying that this team was massively underachieving as they sat 8th in the league, not being able to really string any wins together. Then they came to Ibrox and gave us a pretty damn good game of football, which took a substituted appearance by Alfredo Morelos to come on the park and win us the game, thanks to goal in the 68th minute. But after that game of football, when it did only finished one nil. We all kind of agreed, we sat back and went, you know what, the form and all that doesn't really tell the story. That's a good football team. They've gone through a wee bit of blip right now. I'm sure they'll turn it around and they'll come back in our second game and be in a much, much better place than they were going into the first one. Yeah, do you remember all that? Well, it's got to be said, ladies and gentlemen, they haven't had that turn the corner moment yet in the season. They are still only consistent at one thing and that's being in consistent, which is quite crazy to think about because this is a team that's in 8th in the Polish League, 10 points behind the league leaders around this time of the season is kind of unheard of and let's be brutally honest, we've seen them, they are a very good football team, they have a couple of very, very dangerous players that can hurt teams and they have had moments throughout the season when you say, right, they'll turn it around now, but they just cannot string wins together, it's sort of one step forward, two steps back, if you've got your GTA San Andreas radio on, you'll recognise that wee tune, but that summarises their season absolutely perfectly. And in European football, it's a very, very similar story, right? Because they lost to us, but they played pretty well. They lost to Benfica, but they played very well and lost 4-2 in a game of football that if you actually go and check and you see the chances were created, Lake Poznan should have at least got a point for that game, maybe even three, but they didn't. But then they went into the third game versus Standard Liege, must win game of football, and they got the job done at home, winning 3-1. Another fantastic display at home for them. You're thinking, right, this group now has just got a hell of a lot more interesting because after three games, everyone sort of got points, and it's starting to get nippy bum time, and then they went into the return leg versus Standard Liege, and they ended up losing 2-1, and a fire game of football we spoke about in the Standard Liege preview, that it was two teams battling for their European lives, but it was Standard that won that battle, thanks to that goal in the 94th minute, and that kind of took the stuffing out of Lech Poznan, and they followed that up with a comfortable loss to Benfica, where they'd never even put a paw on them, if I'm being brutally honest. It was Benfica scored another four goals, taking their goal tally versus Lech Poznan, sorry, to eight goals in this European campaign. Which I'm sure for a lot of people watching today's video is very, very encouraging listening. And hell, it's very encouraging for me to sit here and say in today's video, but, and unfortunately there is a Cardi B style but, in today's video, if you look at their inconsistent season so far, every time they have a very good performance, it seems to be at home, and that is where the last game of this group stage is, people. So, this one might mean we are in for yet another nippy bum time, grey hair turning European game of football from a Rangers perspective. But to finish up on the Lake Poznan, since we last played them, have they changed or alter their tactics? Have they changed it up how they set up? No, no, and no. They still set up the exact same way as we broke down in the previous video. Don't anyway, worry, I'm not going to sit here and bore you guys be repeating the exact same stuff. We've saw them with their own eyes now. They still set up in that 4 2 3 1, which does drop to a 4-4-1-1 when they are defending. And with that being said, that's a sort of done and dusted for the old Lake 
pausing in preview, they are still a good football inside with very good individual players that can hurt you if you give them a wee tiny bit of space. And when they actually want to turn up and want to play, they can be a real pain in the arse. Are they inconsistent right now and still sort of limping through games? Absolutely. But as we've already mentioned and as they have showed this season, they are capable of clicking all together and putting out a performance. Something I'm hoping we see neither of tomorrow. But aye, with the oppositional preview done and dusty, let's flip over and talk about Rangers then, shall we? Because we have some interesting team news to break down. We have important injury updates, which I think will make a lot of people happy. And we just have Rangers things to preview. So let's go on with it. Now, starting off with the most obvious, a win sees us top the group and actually takes us out of being able to play the teams that's dropping in from the Champions League, like your Manchester United, etc. That takes them um, off the table. But we could still possibly top the group with a draw or a loss, depending on how Benfica get on in the last game versus Standard Liege, which if I'm being brutally honest, I think we can all agree Benfica's going to go out there and win that game pretty comfortably. So if we want to go ahead and top this group, we need to go there, get the job done, pick up the three points, get that delicious money for topping the group, and then get a more favourable draw in the knockouts, which could bring even more moolah to the club, which will really drive the moon howlers absolutely crazy. But what I really find interesting about tomorrow's game of football is the possibility of changing a couple of players. And because of the way the games went, because of what Gerrard has said last week, and he's even said in today's press conference, it's not going to be whole team changes, but there will be a couple of changes. And that prospect right there just excites me right now. Where it used to scare me whenever we took a player out and I'd go, oh no, this could go very wrong. It's completely flipped because I'm now looking at guys that's sitting on the brink like Zungu. You're talking about Haji. These boys are now rotational options to come in and with a chip on their shoulder and something to prove with their talent, it could be absolutely glorious the more and they would definitely be two changes I would love to see both Zungu and your man Hadji now normally I would actually have Big Cedric in a part of this conversation and I'd love to have seen him get in there but kind of giving a wee spoilers for the injury team news that may have been knocked on its head as the man's picked up a little bit of a knock but before we go further down that rabbit hole which is Rangers injuries there is one last thing that I want to talk about something I want to highlight and it is based on what we just talked about the fact that yes we are making a couple of changes for a competition we've already qualified but we won't be making whole squad changes we won't be resting the likes of Tav your Goldsons the cornerstones of the team and I absolutely love the fact that we are they doing it now there will be people watching today's video saying no we should be doing that when important league game coming up and again I can understand from that point of view but for me us keeping the top cornerstones of our squad playing and keeping that standard that really backs up the idea that's been branded around all season the one game at a time mentality we're taking nothing for granted we're not overlooking anybody we want the same intensity and the same mindset going into every game we'll keep the majority of the same players and then they just drop players for games and bring the level to no let's keep it up there and i just love that Gerard has done this for a game and a competition we're already qualified in but he isn't he happy settling there he wants to go out there and win it and i love that because as simple as it is to say why settle for second place when first place can be won. But aye, enough gushing about the gaffer then, shall we? Let's get on with the rest of the team news. But now, we talked about Cedric Itton. Now, he's not officially ruled out of the game, but he does have that slight knock slash slight problem, so that probably will affect his ability to start this game. But fingers crossed it clears up and the big man can get involved because I just, I would love to see him getting that confidence in his game because that's the only thing he's lacking, the confidence in front of goal. And the only way you'll get that is by playing games and putting the ball into the back of net. But we do also have an update regarding Holander and Ryan Jack, who did get a bit of news earlier on in this week, saying that they would be eligible to play in this game, and that was correct. However, Steven Gerrard has made the decision to just wait and be patient with them and save them for the weekend. So there'll be no return of Ryan Jack or Philippe Holander, unfortunately, in tomorrow's game, but they are eligible for the weekend. Now, thankfully, there's no other fresh injuries or suspensions or anything like that to break down. Your George Edmondsons, your Jordan Jones are obviously ineligible and your man Nikola Katic is still four to five weeks away from being back into the mixer. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen. It is a fresh lick of paint for this Rangers team and it genuinely is a massive headache for Gerard to go out there and pick an 11 to hopefully go ahead 
and top this group. But with that being said, that is the oppositional preview. That is the Rangers preview. And that is the latest Rangers team news. Now, with all that information out there, hopefully it does help you a little bit with today's prediction on on on. I'd love it if you've got involved in the comment section below so I can see where everyone's head's at because that's why we do the channel. It's fun, it's interesting, and it's all about talking Rangers things. So what are you thinking about tomorrow's game? And whilst you guys are going ahead and finding your opinion out there, I'll give you mine very, very briefly. I'm expecting a bit of a nippy bum time game, but I do think we will have too much for like pausing. And I just feel like Gerard will have this team raring to go, almost playing like they need to win it. I've just got that feeling about the team. So I'm actually going to go ahead and pick Rangers 2, like pausing in 1, which may surprise a lot of people, but the record, especially in Europe for scoring goals at home, is not too bad. So I expect them to maybe nick a goal here and make it interesting. But with that being said, that is me officially done and dusty done. And if you did get involved down there in the comments section below, I will be speaking to you very, very shortly. But before we wrap up today's video, as always, a massive thank you from me to the on taking that wee bit of your time out of your day to sit here and talk about Rangers things with me. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Take care of yourselves, everyone. All the best and bye-bye.